If you're anything like me, you wish you could visit the Crater of Diamonds State Park in Murfreesboro, Arkansas at least four or five times a year. Until recently, the only way to get gravel to look through at home for diamonds was to purchase it in the gift shop of the Crater of Diamonds State Park. Now, Glenn Worthington, the guy who literally wrote the book on diamonds, is selling boxes of unsearched lamperite from his website. This is it. This is the large box from Mid-America Prospecting or Genuine Diamonds in Arkansas. This is the large box. Here is my unboxing video. So I ordered this on the 21st of October and he has been inundated with orders. So I'm lucky to get mine now. I saw a video that he posted just yesterday um, showing that he was still sorting hundreds of orders, uh, packaging and mailing hundreds of orders that he got on the internet, and he was still on the 21st. So, um, I have taken off my information, uh, but Mid-America Prospecting information is right here in case you need to um, contact them. So here is our box. It is a large flat rate box. Um, the price for postage is $21.10 and the dimensions are 12 inches by 12 inches by five and a half inches. And as you can see, there is plenty of jam packed dirt within this box. Um, this is not the first box of gravel um, that I've received, not from uh, the diamond mine, but um, I've ordered sapphires, I've ordered gold dirt, all right, so let's look inside. Ah, and he's taped on the inside too. Let me get my sharp object. All right. Really great packaging job. There's virtually no leak and it's even taped on the inside black plastic. So the tape will come right off. These are the really heavyweight bags, the contractor bags. And oh, right here off the back, we have um, a card, nice business card with contact information, and our Ziploc block bag full of heavy material. And so. He included heavy material inside each of the bags so that you know what it is that you are looking for. These are what you get at the crater when you wet sift and learn how to concentrate the gravel by using the Saruka or box screens. These that we're looking for are quartz, spinel, chrome diopside, and pyrope garnets. Your garnets will stick to a rare earth magnet. All right, and inside, now it gets a little dusty in here. We have some fresh, Lamperite. Okay, and if you see the bits of Lamperite, none of it's been weathered, and it, it's it's um, a little bit moist, uh, but mostly dry. Um, you can see the speckles from the non-broken down material, and you can see the composition of the lamperite. And if you dig at it, it'll just crumble. Um, but you can see that this is non-weathered material. The thing to understand about this box is that a benefit to going to the crater is that these lamperite samples that you're looking at now are weathered through erosion and other natural processes at the crater. Then all those technique videos from the seasoned diamond miners show us that we can use nature to find the best source of gravel that's already been concentrated by nature at the park. The box that we're looking through is unsearched, unconcentrated by erosion, and that means when we look at this material, we're gonna be the first ever person to look at this material since it came out of the ground millions of years ago.
lamprite is rare and diaminiferous lamprite is even rarer. That means when we concentrate the gravel, it will look less like this and more like this. What you'll want to do is make sure that you break down the material. And then I like to use classifiers. I'll show you how to do that. I might save a piece to see if, it, if I can set it out and naturally um, erode on maybe a dish. So maybe get one of these big chunks. That's pretty cool. You can see the, I think that's manganese on the outside, the weathering. You can see those bits on the inside. If you want to learn more about the composition of this, Glenn's video is linked in the description box below. Alright, so this is the materials I use when I go to the crater. I have my Mad Grip gloves. I have two right hands. My left hand is here and I have another left hand somewhere else. Love these gloves. They're very grippy. Have classifiers. This is a set of five classifiers. They stack neatly on top of each other. They also fit a five gallon bucket. Other classifiers are here and they're in different size meshes. I have my 11 gallon tub. This is what I put water in. And then the fi uh, five gallon buckets. If I'm gold panning, um, I'll use the gold pan. And if I am looking for diamonds, I'll use the Saruka. Um, diamonds are sapphires, and the Saruka um, is great for classifying heavy material on the inside. So I'll show you how these work. First, start with clean water. You might be a crater head if you know the days when the troughs get emptied and re-cleaned. Okay, for classifying you want to put the smallest mess on the bottom and then put each smallest mesh consecutively up. On your five gallon just like so and glove up I highly recommend a scoop of some sort so big clumps you can scrape to break them up or you can use a pick um, I'm just gonna sort a little bit of the mostly Composed material. You don't see many big gravelly rocks here and that's because we don't get to use erosion too much. Now these are not rocks, these are composite um, lamprite, uh, so we can break these up and end up with little bits later on. If we do have any rocks, we'll collect in these bigger size spoons. So you might have one bucket to save the bigger material that hasn't eroded down yet. Fun for another day.
another benefit to the crater gravel is that the silt has already been washed away. So when we put this in the water, it's potentially going to be extremely muddy. So here I'm just giving a quick rinse to try to get a lot of the silt out. I'm using my smallest mesh container and the silt will go into the bucket. I can pour it off later on. Getting the heavies out of this after it dries is kind of fun because you can go through it with a loop or microscope and see some amazing things. Here I'm just really washing the rest of the silt off of the gravel before I put it into my Saruka. This is the smallest size mesh. Now, using a rocking motion, I'm going to create a hill in my middle of my Saruka, and you turn and then repeat. What this does is the shaking will allow the heavies to go to the bottom, and rocking it will force things to the center. When you turn it, um, it will force things back into the center the opposite direction. Every time you turn it, you're going to want to do some tapping um, I can't fit my hands in, but if you can tap, tap the edges of the Saruka onto your hands, it will help force those heavies down towards the screen. Keep doing this until you feel like you've got a good handle. It's really easy to move gravel about on your screen. I use really light, small portions of gravel so I can control the movement and focus my centers. Those serious miners at the crater are able to lift and handle much more material. Once you get your center where you think it's perfect, then you're going to want to lift it out and set it to the side to drain. It helps if you tilt the Saruka at about a 45 degree angle in order to get the water to roll out. Normally at the crater, you would create a bed of gravel in order to flip your Saruka onto so that the gravel won't bounce. So I've set up a towel and a pillowcase here so that when I flip the gravel towards me, that the gravel bounces less. Now you can see in the middle that my center is quite small. That's what's going to happen with this kind of gravel because it hasn't been concentrated. You're going to take a scoop and scoop up the heavies to save for later drying and sorting. Resist the urge to touch the gravel before you scoop it out. You can actually force diamonds down to where you'll never see them and miss them before you have a chance to scoop. Next, just flatten out and repeat the process again. So what do you do after you get your centers done and they're wet and you want to look through them? Well, this is the best way. Turn your oven on and put your centers in the oven. They'll dry much faster and then in just a few minutes you'll be good to go. What you see here is the heavy material that Glenn sent for us to look at before. And as you can see there's lots of spinel, um, I found a couple of garnets in here, lots of quartz, and other heavy material that's insignificant. No diamonds. I haven't looked through all of my material yet found a couple cool things like this little teeny tiny guy, um, but it's a piece of water washed quartz, I believe. Now it doesn't make sense to me that it's water washed because it came out of the lamperite, so I've held it for question later, but I'm telling you, it's super tiny. It's smaller than a poppy seed. So, you know, woohoo! Playing in the material is my favorite thing to do. So I can't wait to go through. I'm going to let some of the lamparite weather naturally um, outside in the rain. And it's just really cool to get to see this kind of material up close, unsearched, untouched. It's truly a gift. Thanks, Glenn, for letting us have this opportunity. And I hope you enjoy your box if you choose to buy one.
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. In my next video, I might show you gold panning from Georgia or sapphire hunting from Montana. So be sure and click that notification bell if you'd like to be notified when those videos come live. Thanks again for watching today. Thank you.